so Halloween is coming up and I thought that I would um, go through some of my movies that I own and tell you my favorite horror movie all of my favorite horror movies like unfortunately I don't own like Psycho um I don't own Rebecca uh, but I do own a lot of them so <laughs> I thought it would be fun to just go through the ones that I physically Hopefully, um, introduce you to some new horror movies right before Halloween. Right in time for Halloween. Are you excited? I am. Okay, so these are in no particular order, okay? They're just, I basically went to my um, movie case that I have out there. And I went to the horror section, because of course I have to organize them into sections, right? <laughs> and I, um, I just kind of skimmed through them and picked out the ones that I really, really liked. So, some of them I've watched with you guys on, um, on Rabbit Chats this month. Since it's a horror movie month for me and you guys and Rabbit. Um, and some of them are ones that I want to watch on Rabbit. Um, but yeah, some you may know and some you may have never heard of. So let's get started. So. First, I have here is La Casa Muda, which I know it says The Silent House on the actual cover, but um, this is the original, not the remake. Please understand, I have nothing against remakes of movies most of the time. The remake of this is actually really bad, so don't see it. Um, this one is in Spanish. It's originally from Uruguay. I hope I said that right. It's from Uruguay, and uh, you can see right here in the corner, La Casa Muda. Um, I should like Gustavo Hernandez. So, you can also see here in the top corner, based on a true story. You always know how that's going to turn out. You're going to be more scared than usual because you're going to be like, wow, this was a true story, holy crap. Um, so, let me go ahead and read you guys the synopsis on the back, okay? Teenage Laura and her father travel to an isolated house in the country hired by the owner to clean it out and prepare it for sale cut off from the rest of the world with no phone and no power it was never going to be a comfortable job the already grueling experience gets even worse when things take a sinister turn and Laura is left trapped alone in a malevolent house hungry for her blood. Shot entirely, this is the part I really like, shot entirely in a single uninterrupted take. Gustavo Hernandez's The Silent House, or La Casa Muda, is the ultimate experience in atmosphere and dread.
so this is one of the movies that I did play on a rabbit chat recently and people loved it absolutely loved it so I hope that you enjoy it as well Also, this is from To Help You Out. This movie came out in 2010, I think. <laughs> okay, next up on the list is a movie that a lot of you guys know, I think. The original. Mm. The original Carrie. Now, I'm sure a lot of you, film and horror fanatics like me, have seen this. But just in case you haven't, this is incredible and a true classic, honestly. And I love that you can see that I got it for six dollars at Bookman's. <laughs> um. All hell breaks loose when a tortured, misfit teenager unleashes her secret telekinetic powers against her psychotic mother. Truly psychotic. And statistic classmates. Based on the best-selling Stephen King novel, his ultimate revenge fantasy is one of the all-time great horror classics. looking at the pictures in the back. I don't know if you can see that very clearly. But her mom is so creepy in this movie. It really does a good job of laying that atmosphere. So I know in the front it makes it look really gory, but it's actually not too much of a gory movie because I don't really like gore that much. Oh, but man, this is this is really good. It's got that, that classic feel to it, you know? That you just wanna... I don't know. It's one of those movies that you can watch over and over again, I guess. <laughs> and it's Stephen King. I mean, come on. Of course, it's amazing. Okay. The next movie I have is... Diabolique. Or Le Diabolique keep saying it both ways, but it is a very classic French horror movie uh, with a very high rating on Rotten Tomatoes. I think it's like 97 or something. It's in the 90s, but oh, I remember remember um, renting this back when I had like rentals on uh, on Netflix and I kind of just rented it out of curiosity I didn't even know that it was technically like a good movie or like a really really well known classic um, but this was uh, 1955 so it's in black and white Let's read about it. Before Psycho, Peeping Tom, Repulsion, there was Diabolique. This thriller from, I, I can't, I can't, I'll, I'll butcher his name, I just know it. Henri George Clausel. That was embarrassing. Which shocked audiences in Europe and the US. It's a story of two women wife and the willful mistress of the sadistic headmaster of a boys boarding school who hatch a daring revenge plot with its unprecedented narrative twists and terrifying images Diabolique is a heart grabbing benchmark of horror filmmaking featuring outstanding performances by Simone Singh <laughs> 
Um, again, this one's very tame if you're really into horror movies and like all the gore and stuff. Because again, it's classic, it's black and white, and it's from 1955, so a lot of stuff back then was very shocking. That wouldn't really shock us now, but uh, I highly suggest this one. This is one of my favorites, and I'm really happy to own it now, especially the Criterion Collection version. And just, it's really good. It's crazy. Okay. Next. I love this movie. I rented this from Blockbuster. Blockbuster. I rented this from Blockbuster like six times. I remember my dad asking me, why do you keep renting the same movie over and over? And I was like, because I don't understand it to understand it, so I kept renting it, and I kept watching it trying desperately to understand the ending. So, there's a really good, um, like, twist at the end that takes a lot of concentration to understand, I guess. So, the movie is a little slow, in a good way, like in an atmospheric way, that builds up to, like, this crazy, crazy, crazy ending. Um, it technically has a remake in Hollywood called The Uninvited. They are very similar, but I feel like they changed the ending of The Uninvited so much that I'm not sure if it would consider it like a true remake, but maybe like based on or something, I don't know. I do like them both a lot though, so if you haven't seen either one, I I would recommend watching this one first. <laughs> um, this is a Korean movie. Um, I forgot the Korean title. Chongwa Haryeon or something like that. It's the name of two girls. Because the movie is about two sisters. Hence, a tale of two sisters. <laughs> uh, something strange is happening when Zumi. The sticker is over the words. I can't read them all. Maybe I can get it off. Oh shoot. come home to their father's large but dark and somewhat foreboding house. After a stay in the hospital, their dad is something and burdened. And their stepmother, Unju, greets them with forced enthusiasm, with more than a little sense of irritation as well. That's nothing compared to what happens when bedtime rolls around. <laughs> Stylish and shocking, this visually arresting tale of family secrets and uncertain realities is based on a traditional Korean folk tale. Guaranteed to have you gasping for breath, and with each successive scale. You'll be kept guessing until the very end of this unique and brilliant film. So this one I really, really, really love because it keeps you guessing, twist ending, and genuinely scared the crap out of me when I first saw it. There's a couple scenes in it that like literally scared me. So Original 
Simon Till from, I believe, 2008, 2006, sorry, 2006, the original Silent Hill. I know they've had like, um, Silent Hill Resurrection and stuff. I'm talking about the original Silent Hill movie here. It is so scary. <laughs> like, it's not just regular scary, it's like, someone please hold me scary. <laughs> I remember having to turn off the movie in the bathroom scene and like take a break go get a snack and then come back and finish it because I was so scared I physically couldn't finish it <laughs> um they did such a good job with the uh, the effects for anyone who's played the game um the creatures look exactly the same as the game it's amazing and all the effects are practical there's no uh, like, CGI for when it comes to the creatures, which I thought was amazing. I saw somebody, like, behind the scenes of how they get, uh, they cast people, and Pyramid Head did a lot of the different, um, the guy who did Pyramid Head in this movie, did a lot of the different monsters throughout the movie. He was, uh, the guy in the bathroom, the one that made me turn off the movie. <laughs> and he was also, I thought he was one of Anyway, it's pretty crazy when you watch the behind the scenes and see the things that these actors had to go through to like, um, to get into their, their costumes. They're... Oh, it's so cool. There's a YouTube video for it somewhere. I just don't know where it is right now. Um, based on the best-selling horror action game, Silent Hill stars Radha Mitchell from Man on Fire as Rose. Desperate mother who takes her adopted daughter Sharon to the town of Silent Hill. Oh, good parenting. In an attempt to cure her of her ailment. After a violent car crash, Sharon disappears and Rose begins her desperate search to get her back. She descends into a fog of smoldering ash and into the center of the twisted reality a town's terrible secret. Pursued by grotesquely deformed creatures and a townspeople stuck in permanent purgatory, Rose begins to uncover the truth behind the apocalyptic disaster that buried the town. Burned the town down 30 years back. It's really scary. It's truly scary. I uh, don't know how true it is to the storyline of the game because this may shock you, but I've never played Silent Hill, the game. I'm so sorry. I've played Fatal Frame a lot. That was my game of choice instead of Silent Hill. <laughs> um, definitely worth a watch, especially if you like creatures like me creatures really scare me and really get to me way more than like ghosts or anything so loved it alright let's take a trip back in time again shall we Rosemary's Baby another classic this one was in 19, 1968 so, it is in color, it's not black and white, but it's very classic feeling, if you know what I mean. It's got kind of that grainy look to it that you kind of just want sometimes, you know? And usually I'm not one for like demon movies because I feel like they're a little too played out and the only one that really ever scared me was The Exorcist from like 1970 something which I don't own actually <laughs> um but this one does it in a way that like I don't know how to explain it it's a little bit different it doesn't throw it in your face like today's exorcist movies where everything's like people slamming into walls or blood everywhere just screaming all the time I don't know it's more subtle which I appreciate I like subtle 
atmosphere creepy horror rather than blood and guts violent which I mean, it's fine sometimes but usually <laughs> oh my nose okay <laughs> possibly the best horror film ever made okay that might be a stretch but okay it's still really good the best horror film ever made. This brilliant adaptation of Ira Levin's best-selling novel is the story of a loving, young New York City couple who are expecting their first child. Like most first-time mothers, Rosemary experiences confusion and fear. Her husband, an ambitious but unsuccessful actor, <laughs> makes a pact with the devil that promises to send his career skyward. Director Roman Polanski elic elicits uniformly extraordinary performances from the all-star cast. Ruth Gordon won an Oscar for her performance as an over-solicious next-door neighbor in this classic chiller. Wow, I didn't know she won an Oscar. I mean, she did great in that role, so I'm not surprised. Uh, basically, yeah, I won't say any more about what it's about, but it's pretty amazing. I, this is another one that I watched on Rabbit not too long ago. Um, it's just, it's got that feeling, you know, the, the feeling. Okay, next one. Oh, what happened to this movie? What is on my nail? As above, so below. No. There's mixed reviews about this movie. Some people really like it, like me. And some people really don't like it. And that's totally cool. It's basically... If you like found footage, you'll probably like this. If you're kind of iffy about found footage movies, you might not. But I would still say give it a chance. Because I played this on a rabbit chat and I've never seen like 20 people at a time get so terrified. Like they were typing in the chat and they were just like, oh my god, 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 oh my god. Like they were dying. I was even typing it and I had already seen it before. Um, miles of twisting catacombs lie beneath the streets of Paris. Like a bunch of these movies about Paris or our French movies. France is scary. The end. <laughs> uh, the eternal home to countless souls. When a team of explorers ventures into the uncharted maze of bones, they uncover the dark secret that lies between the city of the dead. A journey into madness and terror. As above, so below reaches deep into the human psyche to reveal the personal demons that come back to haunt us all. There are some really scary scenes in this, and because it's found footage, there's a lot of shaking of the camera, which again gets your heart rate up and your adrenaline going. There's just, they do a really good job of, like, pure, uncut, scary, you know what I mean? Like, there's no fluff. The movie is just a hundred percent scary. You know what I mean? Maybe that's why some people didn't like it so much, is because the storyline wasn't super established, I guess, or intriguing. But it's so scary. So if you're looking for something that will make you like scream and jump and hold on for dear life until like whoever's sitting next to you, this is your. Okay, here's another movie that a lot of you might know because it's like always talked about when people talk about like the scariest movies. Here it is, here it is. You ready? <laughs> the Descent. Oh, come on. If you're a horror movie fan, you've probably seen it, right? I know you have, don't lie. Or at least you've heard of it, right? So. Really, I never understood. 
is the point of this? Um, this movie I saw when I was much younger, actually. Uh, when did it come out? Uh, 2005. And it's only an hour and 40 minutes long. It's pretty short. Um, this one definitely did scare me because, again, it has creatures. So if you're into creatures, this is another movie that you're gonna want to watch. Um, let's see. On an annual extreme outdoor adventure, six women meet in a remote part of the Appalachians to explore a cave hidden deep in the woods. That's a recipe for a horror movie right there. Oh, right then. Far below the surface of the earth, disaster strikes when a rock fall blocks their exit, and there's no way out. The women push on, praying for another exit. There's something else lurking under the earth. The friends are now prey, forced to unleash their most primal instincts in an all-out war against an unspeakable horror. One that attacks without warning, again, and again, and again. So, here, a little view of the back. Just Particularly scary. And this, the descent opens with a bloody bang and never lets up. You know, it's actually been a really long time since I've seen this. I might watch this on a rabbit chat soon. I feel like it's overdue. It's probably been like, like three years since I've seen this. But it is a little bit gory, as you can see. Definitely, definitely some good jump scares, and definitely, if you want a, like sometimes you want that atmospheric horror, like Rosemary's Baby, and sometimes you want the descent horror, where it's like in your face, and you're screaming, and there's jump scares, and you're terrified. It is one of my favorites. I haven't finished it. I've seen, seen like <laughs> oh, that's Luna over there. She's making noise. I've seen three fourths of it, but not the whole thing yet. And it's called Session Nine. I mean, look at that picture. Look at that picture. Come on. You can't tell me that doesn't look horrifying just from the picture of the front of the. time I saw this movie or I went to go watch it, I kept getting distracted. So, one of these days I'm dying to just watch it and finish it, so I think this is a definite rabbit jack contender. So if you want to watch this with me, just keep an eye on my, uh, my Twitter for the rest of the month, okay? It looms up out of the woods like a dorm. I can't read the news. It looms up out of the woods like a dormant beast, grand, imposing, abandoned, and deteriorating. The Denver State Mental Hospital, closed down for 15 years, is about to receive five new visitors. Donning protective gear, the men of Hazmat Elimination Co. <laughs> That's what it's called. Venture into the eerily vast and vacant asylum filled with an evil and mysterious past. Rampant patient abuse, medieval medical procedures, and rumors of demonic possession are some of the many dark secrets the hospital holds. But then, so do each of the men. I love that last line. Does that not want, make you want to like really see the movie? It makes me want to finish it because I never found out you know but I can tell you right now this movie is a mix between atmospheric and terrifying <laughs> like it's got the atmospheric part down because 
the whole movie is basically them walking slowly through a really, really, really creepy abandoned mental hospital. And then there's like jump scares and all the suspense where you know something's about to happen. And it's pretty much as scary as you think it is. It really is. So, yeah. Okay, so the next movie, again, if you're really into horror, you may have heard of it. But maybe you, you've seen the remake or something, and if you have seen the remake, I highly recommend you seeing the original because the way the ending is done is, I, in my opinion, very, very scary and very good. <laughs> and that is Shudder. So this is the original uh, movie from Thailand. So it was a Thai movie first and then America. Hollywood did a remake and the remake was okay it wasn't terrible but the ending just didn't have that same like creepy feel to it the ending of this one was like oh my gosh, no way, no way oh my god it scared the crap out of me oh Thai photographer Tun found some lights appearing on his pictures the lights were in mysterious different shapes he was convinced that the light did look like the woman's face. His friends die mysteriously one by one. That's all it says on the back. That's it. That's the whole thing. And it's kind of awesome because it doesn't give too much away, but basically, yeah, a photographer's friends start dying one by one. And he's just desperately, desperately trying to figure out why. And the ending is so creepy. But, um... so much. But then I found out there were other people that liked it too. So, I'll just go ahead and say it. <laughs> the original Blair Witch Project. I don't know about you guys. This movie scared me to death. Because I have a very, very, very overactive imagination. So I think things like crazy. Like, I can think things up in my head like nobody's business. And that's exactly what I did for this movie. Um, in case you haven't seen it, I'm sure you already know what it's about. I'm not gonna read the back because it's like really small and it's a lot to read, but, um, three college students go into the woods to make a documentary about what they call the Blair Witch, which is like an urban legend in their town, and they get lost, and the scariest thing about this movie to me is how little they show of anything. They never show the Blair Witch. They never really show anything, and at the same time, it's terrifying. The suspense that it builds up because you're expecting to see something, but you never do. And so then your mind makes up what you think the Blair Witch looks like, or what you think happened. Just, if you have a very, very creative or overactive imagination, I feel like this will scare you a lot more <laughs> than other people. Um, it is found footage. It's like the first found footage movie. And when it came out, people thought this movie was real. They thought it was like a real Thing and like this footage was found and these people really were lost in the woods and that's how it was marketed and it's genius so this really kicked off the found footage genre and it's it's very scary I don't care what anyone else says <laughs> okay this is a Japanese movie now 
that actually goes by um, two names. I've seen it go by, well, I've actually seen it go by three different names. Uh, on here it says Ring of Curse, which is what I saw for a while on Netflix. It's not on Netflix anymore, I'm sorry. It also goes by I'm Sorry for the Japanese title. Uh, so, any of those three titles means this for me. Yuka had the most horrifying experience of her life one year ago. Her high school classmate, Kurohane, is blessed with unparalleled literary talent, but she is bullied because of her eerie appearance. When Kurohane starts writing a script for the school play, Inexplicable deaths start to occur around Yuka. It turns out that Kurohane's script contains a curse to kill the readers indiscriminately. Can Yuka and her classmates escape Kurohane's impending curse? I think it looks cool. Bookman. That's where I get a lot of my movies. Um. One is definitely more atmospheric, almost like more suspense than horror. So a lot of it is like, like oh shoot, oh shoot, oh my gosh, wow. Instead of like, you know, I don't think you're gonna cover your face while watching this movie, but still definitely worth watching because it's very like interesting and the end. Too versed in J-pop, but these three girls are a J-pop band, Buono or something. I think is what they're called. I could be wrong, so correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, it's pretty good for it being like the acting in it. Their acting is very, very good. <laughs> I want to rewatch it now just by watching it, or just by looking at it, talking about it. I watched this recently on a rabbit chat and it was super popular, but I will warn you about something. It is a horror movie in the beginning and a thriller at the end, if that makes sense. So the beginning has some really scary, scary images and scenes and suspense, and then about halfway through the movie, it turns into like this, like, drama, suspense, thriller, kind of, where you, you feel sad, you feel things that you didn't expect to feel during, like, a horror movie, but it's so, so, so good. Um, it's got a really great twist ending, and really, really beautiful cinematography, and it is from the Philippines, so... Warning about that in case you were getting it confused with like the road, the American movie. It's not that. <laughs> I mean, look at the picture. It's not that. Um, so when you're looking up like how to watch it or if you want to buy it or something, remember it's the road, the Filipino movie, not the American one. Okay. Um, three teenagers go missing on an abandoned road after a joyride gone wrong. A police investigator assigned to the case. There's something covered in the back, sorry. Um, in the course of this, this investigation, Louise finds the remains of another victim on the same abandoned road. The corpse is identified as one of two sisters who both disappeared a decade before. Louise must dig deeper into the secrets and mysteries of the ghosts lingering in the dark and desolate pathway in order for him to find the three missing teens. As the mystery unravels, Louise discovers a history of brutality 
and murders that will shake him to the core. scary, but you just felt uneasy, like the whole movie, and you weren't sure why. It's like that, but with a really, 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 really great ending. So, um, I promise you, this has got one of the best payouts of any movie I've ever seen. The ending just makes everything worth it. It's so incredible. Um, the stickers are covering, like, almost the whole description in the back, so basically, like, Nicole Kidman plays the mom of two children, and her two children are photosensitive, so they can't have sun hit them, or it, like, harms them a lot. So, she lives in this really creepy Victorian mansion, with all doors, like, with curtains on them all the time, and when you open one door, you have to close another door, and it's like all these rules and to keep our children safe and stuff. And the children start like talking to ghosts, and the mom's like, "What are you talking about?" Blah. So it's it's like a very haunted house ghost story, creepy, amazing movie. one of my favorite horror movies mainly because I'm really scared of aliens <laughs> so it actually gave me nightmares when I saw it, but then again I think I was 13 or 14 when I saw it so I was very scared right now I was 12 I was, no, I was 12 this came out in 2002, right? I think it came out in 2002 um uh, if you have not seen this in so good. Personally, to me, it is the scariest thing that M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong has ever, like, produced, directed, been a random extra in, whatever. From M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong, the writer and director of The Sixth Sense and Unbreakable, comes the story of the Hess family in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, who wake up one morning to find 500 foot crop circle in their backyard. Graham Hess and his family are told extraterrestrials are responsible for the sign in their field. They watch with growing dread the news of crop circles being found all over the world. Science is the emotional. Emotional? Seriously, I cried. I cried during one scene of this movie. It got to me. emotional story of one family on one farm as they encounter the terrifying last moments of life as the world is being invaded. Oh, this is so good. I can go on and on and on about it. I know I could. But just trust me on this one, okay? If you like alien movies and you like creatures, then you will absolutely love this one, okay? Oh, Joaquin okay. Phoenix Providing some like comedic relief in it too. It's just all around fantastic. Another movie I'm sure many of you know. I watched this when I was 14, I think, or 15. And I know I say I'm not a huge fan of gore or anything. This is an exception. This is like a huge exception. I love this movie. It, again, if you haven't seen it, just don't even look anything up about it, okay? 
I know you probably already know, even if you haven't seen it, that it's like torture and gore and stuff. Yes, that's true, but there's so much more. And I'm only showing you the first one because the first one is the only one I really, really like. The second one's okay, but from there they're kind of... Mm. This one has a kick to it that the other ones don't have. So, obsessed with teaching his victims the value of life deranged, sadistic serial killer abducts the morally wayward. Once captured, they must face impossible choices in a horrific game of survival. The victims must fight to win their lives back or die trying. This is smart, scary, gory. What else could you want? Alright, now I saved. I have two left, okay. They're very different from each other. <laughs> this one I'm about to show you is my favorite horror movie of all time. <laughs> so, Martyrs. I know a lot of you are like, who have who've seen this movie are like, wait. I thought you just said that you're not really, not really into, like, gore and everything. I get you. I do. But, this is a major exception. I saw this movie in, way before gore actually bothered me so much. So when I originally watched it, I wasn't bothered by it. Um, and since then, I think I've watched it probably, like, 12 times. If I had to. 12 or 13 times. Uh, I'm gonna put a big, huge, huge, huge uh, trigger warning on this. Before you watch this movie, please understand that it is extremely violent, intense, emotional, like emotionally draining, um, and very very gory. So, that's my warning to you. A lot of people won't like it. Um, there's a lot of torture in it, but it's not like, like, hostile or something like that, where it's just torture for torture's sake. There's a reason behind it, and they explain the reasoning behind it, which I really appreciate. And I watched this on a rabbit chat a few days ago, and literally, when the movie ended, Everybody was just trying to figure out the ending and discuss the ending with each other. Like, it really affected people, the ending. And it's really cool because it's kind of an open ending, and you're left to interpret it how you want. So, the first half of the movie is, like, extreme horror, and the second half is, like, extreme thriller, which I think is really cool. And again, I'm just going to remind you, favorite horror movie of all time right here. For sure. Now, I'm gonna end it off with something that I think will work really, really nicely for those who want to start getting into the classics or something, but don't know where to start. I will show you where to start. Alfred Hitchcock, my friend. So this is actually Alfred Hitchcock Presents, which was a show that he used to do, like a TV show, where there's short segments of, like, scary, kind of like Tales from the Crypt, or something like that, where each segment is like maybe 20 minutes long, 30 minutes long, or something. And there's 39... 39 episodes, and this is season one. Um, uh, okay, Whew, I did it. Okay. These are all the discs, and there he is. So, he went... Would, um, come out and introduce 
produce the show. And then after that, yeah, I'd show a little one segment and then you come back out and introduce another one. Come back out. Kind of like the host, you know? After I like. I really like movies like this, where, or shows I should say, where it has smaller, shorter segments, so like if you're not feeling one segment, you know it's gonna end soon anyway, so just power through kind of thing. Um, so it's really creepy and classic and nice to watch around Halloween, so I just wanted to throw that one in there. And uh, 